Hello, everybody. How you doing, Lily? Hi, John. I saw you dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Little wind up there. If I can't watch a few TikTok, just turn myself on. Woohoo! Well, I always everybody. entertain myself, John. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is my pretty co-host, Lily Starr. We are here to talk to you about stocks that you want to talk to us about. We look at penny stocks. Doesn't matter if they're on the OTC market. A penny stock is any stock under five bucks. Let's try to keep it there. Every now and then, yeah. someone likes to throw in a big one for us just to see if we can handle it. We can handle it. It's just not our favorite flavor. <laughs> All right. Let me throw up some news. I don't mean throw up. You know what I mean. Okay. Let's get that news published out there, John. Yes, get it here. I've already got it set up. I don't have to do any coding. I just got to get the right page up for us. There we go. Can you see it? I see it. Great. I've got my wrong page on this other computer. I can't see what's up anymore. So I can't see you. Uh, I'll just work with what I got. I know you're out there. How you doing? <laughs> um, this is OTC News. It's all penny stocks, but only OTC. There's about uh, 10 days worth of news here, roughly. Some great news. There's a lot of deals going on, and there is a lot of deals going on right now. For a while there, the news was pretty dry. I was having a hard time just keeping you with enough to entertain you. Now I just can't keep up with it. There's a lot of news. No, oh, I see AABB on there. Yeah, there's been a lot of companies that we have talked about a lot in the past that are starting to resurface, which sooner or later, I mean, what goes down must come back up unless they break. So, um, and I've been having fun. Some of these uh, stocks have been coming out with some big news. If we have time, I'd like to jump onto a couple of them that I think are going to be hot now because they're making revenues. They went from oh, yeah. ankle, ankle deep revenue to hip deep revenue and they've done it in such a quick time and it's just the start so if they got that motor running oh man the money's going to be pouring in now and that's what gives a company value that's what everybody's really after i mean there's a lot of reasons to invest in a company but the bottom line is every single company is trying to make money that's that's the goal so when you see them hitting the bullseye that's time to get on board, especially when they're down at a penny. You know, that's when you start to move up to 10 cents, 17 cents. And exactly. It starts getting serious. Um, yeah. While we're just doing the news right now, John, before we start with tickers, uh, Red Hot Dollars had a good question asking if penny stocks and OTCs can be traded as options. Now, I'm not sure about OTCs, but if they're on the NASDAQ, mostly they usually have options for them. Yes, there are rarely will you ever see, well, there's no options on OTC. I didn't think so. Yeah, you will not see that. There are no options. Well, I had not personally ever looked on, I just trade, because OTCs are so low in value, I don't usually mess with options. But the NASDAQ, yeah. Occasionally, um, you will see warrants on the OTC, but that's only because they fell there from the NASDAQ and they won't stay yeah. there long. Um, but no options. They're all, but penny stocks, sure. There's lots of stocks under five bucks on the NASDAQ, on the New York Stock Exchange that you're going to find options for. But you got to remember, if they're under five bucks, they're mm -hmm. creeping on the chart. Your options are going to be really big spreads. I mean, you got to exactly. Like That's spread. what I wanted to mention that yeah. I don't like playing options on penny stocks because of the big spread, the big ask and spread, plus yeah. your liquidity. If you don't have liquidity, you think you got an option at a really good price. The only problem is if you can't sell it, did you really get anything? You know, so you could expire worthless. Nobody will buy it from you. So liquidity is huge in options and, and also understanding options. But good question. Yeah, it is. All right. I just happened to have uh, Belmore's ticker up. Belmore is always first in the queue. Today, <laughs> Hello, Belmore. Graf Duke 82 another loyal follower, beat Belmore. He was here first by, uh, oh, about 30 minutes. I like to see you guys fighting me first in line. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we can take a look at Sabre. Is that Sabre? Yes. I so it's Sabre you want to do first? No, I've already got DPUI up. Okay. I'm already warmed up on All it, right. so we might as well talk about it. Let's um, do it. DPUI I just covered on the 7th. I believe it was. And 
What's going on right now is they're just catapulting out of the digital printing. What I mean by that is they have a website. They are a printer. They print anything you want, you know, anything from business cards to calendars to banners. If, if you want it, they'll print it. But they only had a website. Well, folks, there's hundreds, thousands of companies out there that will print from their website. That's a lot of competition and you're getting a very thin slice of the pie. So what they did, let me see, we've got the news here. Matter of fact, I've got it. I talked about it on the 7th when they decided to open up a new division called Convention Printing of America. And they opened 11 local offices in high traffic, high commercial areas where they could get print business. They're going to have a few competitors, but they're going to get chunks of business. And these are the cities that they've got them in. And they're shooting for 39 more in 24 months. That gives them 50. Well, today's news was pretty much the same sort of thing, but bigger. They opened up another division, Banner Printing of America, with 28 local offices in key cities. They've done that in the last eight months. Those are all different offices from the other 11 we were looking at doing printing there. And they are shooting for an additional 250 in the next 48 months. When you start doing the math here, how much money? I really think this is big. That's why I covered it. They've limited the competitors and they've guaranteed themselves a sector of the market in each one of these cities. And they've picked high traffic areas. So their revenues are going to grow. And I think their revenues were pretty lame, actually. Um, 304000 at the end of 2022. And yeah, see, they're really not doing anything right now. And that's just with their online website. So I think the company has got a, a booming business that it's just starting to go boom. And I'm not quite sure exactly what the flow it is, but it's under 45 million. They're claiming it's somewhere near 18 million. You've got a decent float for a company that looks like they're going to be rolling in money here in a while. And they are expanding, expanding. You got to remember, they're probably not leasing all of these. You can jump into the filings and see, but if they're buying each one of these locations, that's a lot of assets they're building up right there. Quick look at their assets since we've just mentioned it. We'll just jump over here to their financials, look into their balance sheet. They ain't got much. Whoa. Uh, no, they've only got $35,000 uh, in yeah. assets and four times that much, more than that, in uh, liabilities. Liabilities. So like I said, it looks like they're a startup company, right? They just don't have a lot of money anywhere, not bad or good. All of these new offices, well, how do they got now? They had 28 plus 11. That gives them 39 offices. Not that they are thinking about, that they've got. They're out there. And they've got another 250, just under 300 more that they want to put out in the next two years. Sounds like to me the money's going to be coming in. So that's the catalyst. That's what's got this thing moving. And I think it's going to keep moving. I think as long as they start showing revenues growing, this thing is going to constantly grow. Because as I said, that's what it's all about, making money. You want to do the charting for us, Lily? I'm hoping you yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring it up. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah, you do. <clears throat> okay. So really, from what I see on the charts, no nothing was going on for the longest time. We're just kind of sitting down here, and then all of a sudden, boom. And that happened, what was it, today? Yeah, yes, today. Um, so I'm assuming there was some kind of news or whatever. We were sitting at 0 .0031 before that. And it hit 0 0.0119. So that's a really good movement. You went from the double zeros to, you know, over a penny. So it's coming back down now. And you want to see it hold uh, above your, your moving averages. But um, if this is going to continue, whatever this may be, probably around 0 0.005 to 0 0.006, you're going to see it hang around that area and keep this trend. If not, if you it's look come at the long in. chart, Lily, like the one I year, did, I did, or and the three year, what stands out is the volume is incredible. The volume is compared to where it was before. Yeah, so on either charts, it's really gotten strong, and I think it is all about them making the move. They're it's retroactive. They're going from digital to physical. They're going brick and mortar while everybody else is abandoning brick and mortar. They're coming back to their roots. So I think it personally, I think it's going to help them. And it very well could. Um, but the the just the current trend, because it has 
broken out, obviously, you guys. <laughs> yeah. It was just nothing for the longest time. So big breakout here. It, if it's going to continue the current trend, it's going to stay above that. So it's going to be around the 0 0.005 level, maybe 0 0.006, and hold above those and keep your MAs like it's supposed to. It's going to keep climbing. If not, we're going to break back into this channel. But do they have something going for them right now? Yes, obviously. The volume has mm. definitely increased. There is something going on here. But would I buy here? Uh, not necessarily. But I will get closer, the five-day, five-minute, just so you all can see. Right now, it's... I don't like the current uptrend and how it's already broken down this much, to be honest. The uh, volume today was 26 million, and normally, wow. it's, normally it's under 1 million. Wow. I mean, that's huge. There was a <laughs> lot of play explosive. in here today. <laughs> it is. A lot of play in this one today. I would keep an eye on it to see. Um, how did it end the day? Let's look at that. One day, one minute. Uh, a lot of the stocks that took the strong gains fell in the afternoon. I see that. Yeah. And this one, no different. And so it, it needs to figure, is it going to consolidate in this area? And maybe there's another move? It's possible. And that's what I'd be watching for, you guys. So um, not too bad. It's a, definitely a good one to talk about and have your eyes on because that well, volume is She kept is about unmet. 50% of what she put on the table. Jumping from that low bubble to the yep. high bubble. She's right there in the middle, which is a fair move. I yes. expect it to come back 50%. Absolutely. It's yeah, I would much still, rather evaluate it here for possibly getting a position if we're going to continue than up here. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so, right. yeah, just keep an eye on it, you guys. That's a good one. And okay, hold on, John, I'll switch have, you back. Uh, I did have one request from, uh, I actually got it on Twitter and YouTube from the same person, Mountain Man. He wanted me <laughs> to take a look at QD, Quiddy. <clears throat> And I had never heard of this company. It's Chinese. Even if they don't say China here, if you see a prefix of 86 here in America, it's the one, dial the one before a long distance number. 86 <laughs> is their countries. That's their number. They have to dial 86 if they want to call each other long distance. And we have to call 86 to call in. So this is a Chinese company. And what was it that they did? Um, did I have some information here? Well, what I did notice is when I came over to their financials, and I don't want to do it on this page, on their financials, because that's the first thing we're always looking at. They got a lot of money here. <laughs> they were doing over a billion dollars, then fell down to a half a billion, then down to a quarter billion. I mean, they're falling really fast. You can't help but see that. You come over to here, and it's like, I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I was really curious. So what I found, and they've only got three pieces of news here. Dun, da, da, da. Of course, it's not going to come up when I need it. Right there. <laughs> That's why I have these things open pre. You never know how long it'll take. They've only got three pieces of news. Um, one is real good. They regained compliance with minimum bid price requirement. They were obviously under a dollar for six months. And they got a warning and they got it taken care of. But they're still pretty bloody close to it. They need to get further up. Um, then they had the unaudited financial reports, which is the only place I got a better peek at what this company is doing. Now, they're reporting it in their own money. Every now and then, they convert it to us. The total revenues were $160 million of their money compared to three seventy eight dollars before, one year ago. Whatever that is, it's half. So, you know, I see they say it's 23 million that they made this last quarter, which is half of what they made a year ago. So it is still falling. Looking at the annuals, total revenues were 83 million. And what were they? It was 200. <coughs> it was about a quarter billion. So now they're one fourth down again. So they're falling really, really fast. And it, it, if money is what I'm measuring a company by, this company is, is fast losing. I mean, I, I wouldn't touch it right now because I don't know what's going on. Now, there's a lot of information here. You want to know what's going on? <laughs> they, I mean, they realize they're losing money and they're covering every single aspect of what they're doing with this money here. So if you really care, Mountain Man, here's some good reading for you. Outside of that, I couldn't find a whole lot to talk about with this company. Um, share structure. We're under 190 million on the float, best I can tell you. So outside of that, I don't see a whole lot going on with this company. Um, she's out of the red.
but well, she just jumped another penny while we've been talking about it. I noticed <laughs> these things. I noticed these things. Kids didn't get away with anything with me. All right. Can we look at QD, see if there was anything yeah, going on? Actually, I don't hate it, John. Look at this. Oh. I mean, granted, there's a lot of sell-off here recent in more recent months, but now is this a six-month chart? Yes, this is a four-hour, six-month chart. So you see that uptrend from 69 cents, which was around November, the end of November. And yep. this is where we currently are. And I'm going to get closer just so we can have a better look. But I just wanted to show that uptrend there. So um yeah, always good to start off with where Absolutely. everything's heading. Yes, you want to see the overall. So here we go, though. This is that massive sell-off we saw, which is probably, let's see, it's uh, that started at 221, so February 21st. Not quite before all this bank stuff uh, started, but okay. Uh, no, I think that's when the feds talked, though, on the 21st okay. of the month. It probably was somewhere <laughs> around there. It, it wouldn't surprise me. And we've had that. That happens. The markets breathe. They listen to the Fed. Whatever's happening, the markets react. All right. So, but even with saying that, this is the uptrend, your red lines. And yes, it's below it a little bit. So it went down to a dollar five. The volume still looks really good. There's a lot of liquidity here. Seems like a lot of people are playing this one. But the dollar five, I just went ahead and marked it and I hit the lowest points. It's still holding up. This is a consolidation we're seeing here. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, either way, you would still have a safe point of putting a stop to know about where you, you let it go because it's going to go back up under the dollar. But so far, it's holding. And so we could see future uptrend here. But um, it's just interesting with what you were saying, John, about their financials and stuff not looking so good right now. Right. So yes. that's what's. It's a divergence. <laughs> They're losing yeah. money and the price of the stock is going up while other companies are making money and the price of their stocks are coming down. Urgh. Yeah, I mean, this one's not terrible and it's holding. I mean, you got the 13 above your 50. I mean, it's crossed over when it made this move right here. So I would watch this one as well. I right, it's in the opportunity close. zone. If something good's going to happen, it can take yes. advantage of this and get up to the top of the channel. That's what I'm thinking too. So, um, and that's why I would watch it um, if I decided to play because this is a decent area right here. I would have a stop set just to protect, um, you know, if it decides to change what it's currently doing. Because we yeah, don't. It looks to change a lot. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely <laughs> could, absolutely could. But that further out view, I mean, not terrible here. No, nope, not terrible. But it's the market may have changed about. here, so it could fall. But um, just know that. Just know it that. I mean, it's already had a lot of movement. It, it does. They put it some does. good news out. But it has to have proof of concept. It's got to be able to hold up here. And if not, then it's done for a little while. All right. Back to you, John. I'm going to Hello, switch you David. back over. How are you doing? Good to have you here. <laughs> All right. You oh, you got me. Bink. Sorry about you. that, folks. Caused tunnel vision <laughs> there. All right, we can jump into some stocks here that we've got on our list. Sabre was above Velmore. Favorite. All right. What did you get first, Velmore? I'm pulling it up. Playing favorites, aren't I? All right, Sabre <laughs> Corporation. We're at $4. It's a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Isn't that the drink one, John? Aren't you familiar with that one? Sabre as a drink? Um, I can't remember. I know y'all played it. Sabre. I don't remember Sabre Isn't at all. that the one that you and LT was talking about before? Was that S Bev? I thought it was Saber. Um, I'm trying to find a piece of news here so we can at least see what the heck they do. So I yeah, got yeah, let's look at it. Company. I mean, we deal ah. with so many of you guys, we definitely get them mixed up. So <laughs> oh yeah. Uh that's an actual press release. Let's see here. Saber Corporation is a leading software technology company that powers the global travel industry, serving a wide range of travel companies, airlines, hotels, travel agencies, and other suppliers. Sabre's technology platform manages more than $260 billion worth of global travel in over 160 countries. Oh, wow. It's a uh, Chinese company, I think. Uh, nope, Texas, but they're working in China. Just because they're in Texas doesn't mean they're not a Chinese company. Um, what was I seeing here? Financials. Financials are huge. Financials are $2.5 billion at the wow. end of 22. Now, if you're playing big stocks, you're used to seeing these numbers. But when you're down here playing penny stock, that's a big number. You see them billions of dollars in a penny stock. And they got to keep about a half a billion dollars of that 
And on the quarterly, they're doing well. They're doing over half a billion dollars every quarter. So I don't see any problems here. A little deeper, just real quick, taking a look at their assets. Since they're a big company, they could have big debt. Total assets, $4.9 billion. Total liabilities, $5.8 billion. It's in line. Uh, yeah. To, to not see debt is surprising. Great, but surprising. But they're not too far off there. And any disclosures here about anything they may have done recently? Oh, man, I got to pay for better internet. It's <laughs> ARS. I'm not sure what an ARS is. Seen um, that before. Okay. They don't want to tell me, so let's try PDF. <laughs> PDF come up faster than web pages do. Didn't used to be like that. You used to have to open up your PDF program, but you're all too young to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, I don't know. Is this a financial? I think. Yep, you got a financial here. So an ARS is a financial. Weird. It should I've just say 10K. So if you want to know more about this company, about their monies and what they're doing, I mean, a financial, a 10K, and this is a major exchange stock, so it's not a disclosure. Yes. If you want information on a company, don't mess around going from different sites. Jump into one of their financials. It has all the history from the day the company came on the market, every name they had, every deal they've made. It's all there. Everything. It's there. Yeah. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> But it's overwhelming running around to 30 different sites trying to find what you don't know you need to find. Exactly. And you don't even know if it's legit information sometimes. Some of these sites are really just built for traffic right. and to get your attention and hype. So yeah. that's why me and John do what we do. And he goes through it and shows you these resources. And But all of it can be found right there. And we do have someone who just invested. That's a good thing. Is it a big investment? That's what your 13 Gs, 13 Ds are. When did they invest? Um, Got a date. 8 million shares, 12, just about 12%. You got one in here. And you never know how many you're going to find. I just saw one that had 12, that 12 million in March. investors all come in there. Now, a lot of them will look like it's a repeat. It, it'll say something like Harbor Country Inc., and then it'll yeah. say Harbor Country LLC. Then the oh, next yeah. one down is Harbor Country LTD. And then the guy who owns Harbor Country, Mr. Wheelie. And all of them, because they're separate entities, each yeah. one invests in the company. And though it looks like it's all the same, they're separate investments. These are separate lots. And they're all coming in. So that's a good thing to see. That was just at the beginning of the month. Yeah. We got some 8Ks here. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of information here that we don't have time to jump into. 8Ks and material change. Here's another investor. So there's a lot of information here. If you're actually interested in the company, jump into that. <laughs> Lily's going to show us the chart now. Not bad. I mean, it is in an overall downtrend. So this is a yearly Ooh. chart. Yeah, this is a yearly chart. However, oh, I like some of the stuff that you were saying. Like, this may be an area of opportunity, so let's not get too down about it. Okay. I just wanted to show it. Um, so if we get closer, like your last six months, four-hour chart, you can see, I mean, it's reacted with the rest of the market. You can see the sell-off like it had before. But this is a key area right here. I mean, like we're getting to the bottom of that channel. And it seems right. like it and wants it to bouncing. hold up. It does bounce. Even if this it's going your one downhill, hour. it does bounce <laughs> up going downhill. That's right. This is your one hour in the last 20 days. I mean, we were just at $7.24, okay. and now we're sitting at three eighty four. dollars So unless something crazy has happened that I don't know about, um, this it, and, and it could be just the overall market sell-off. Like I said, that's kind of expected. You're going to see that in a lot of charts. But um, unless something else is there that we haven't seen, and John just went over a lot of it, this could be an opportunity area right here for Sabre. Yeah. Anytime it comes down to the, if it's <laughs> respecting that chamber, that channel, that chamber, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's respecting it over and over and over again, then there's a high probability it's going to continue to respect it. And, and that's all we're playing is probabilities. Nothing's guaranteed, but it's more in your favor than against if you see it over and over and over again. So this right here is a five-day, five-minute. This is just the last five days, definitely downtrend, downtrend still. 
but you know it kind of hit that bottom there at 384 so what i and you can see right here it's that when it hit 410 it's it could not get over it because this is a channel this is a this is a minute channel within the bigger channel but <laughs> right. when you see it start coming out above that micro channel and it's still yeah it's a micro channel there you go it's still trying to hold up and put now you're talking about something you you've got something here so that's just something to keep in mind like currently it's still in a downtrend like that but it is it's headed that way i think it's headed back up or it could be a good consolidation area right here so, so keep an words, eye on keep that a close eye on it yes Keep an eye on that one because, I mean, Both eyes. really their financial stuff didn't sound too bad. You've got some investors that just invested at the beginning of the month. Yep, yep. yep. So there could be something here, you guys. Definitely check into this one. Keep an eye on it. Don't forget about Sabre. I like that one. Next it has one possibilities. is Navid. Navid came up with CDTX. You know, I knew that was going to be a pharmaceutical company before I even looked at it. There's just certain <laughs> stickers. It's like, you know, that's a chemical yep. combination. And that's what this is. It is a biotech. Um, the biotech is, at least here in America, it's out of San Diego. Share structure on this company, they're under 70 million. Penny stock on the NASDAQ, over a dollar. Everything's looking okay there. We do have current news that's coming in. Um, this isn't all about them. Some of it is. Uh, the company presents preclinical data targeting drug, target antizer. I can't tell if what phase they're in on any of these, and it makes a difference. Early stage is phase one, maybe phase two. But even in phase two, you're probably five years away before they hit the target if everything goes right. So I don't know if this is early stage or late stage. We could might maybe find out. They actually say down there, early stage, late stage, uh, long acting therapeutics design. No, they don't say. All right. Are they making any money? That's a big thing with your biotech. important. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, they're making money, but they're not paying for it. And you can't produce medication and bottle it and you know, distribute it for free. So, this could be other things that they're doing digitally. Um, they could be giving advice to people, consultations. I don't know what's going on here, but they are making money. They did about, uh, what, $49, $50 million and didn't have to pay anything for it? I like that business. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, look, look at this jump on the quarterlies. That steady, seven, 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 just under seven, boom. Jumps to 40 million in September. Now, wow. right now, we are overdue for a financial. We might even see it over here. Uh, no. Um, no. And it's going to be a 10, 10K, 10Q, what, one of those two. So they're making lots of money. It's exploding now. They've got a financial that's going to be coming out anytime. That could be a catalyst. I mean, if they're showing this sort of growth, that could definitely be a catalyst. We've got Form 4s here. These can be a catalyst because these are filings that insiders have to put in whenever they buy or sell mm -hmm. shares of the stock. This person here is Ward Shane. Name is up here. That's a COO, CLO. And we see here that they sold 4,329 shares at $1.53. And that's all you need to see in these. And you can go through each one and see if they're all buys or sells. Red is obviously sell, green is yeah. uh, buy. So there are some small sells here. Got to remember, we're in the midst of inflation right now. Could just easily be uh, cash <clears throat> money. They, they got to pay the rent. They got to buy some food. Seriously, you never know. It's not always about, you know, the company having a bad time. All right, I think that's really all. I'm kind of lost my page there. I th yeah, I think it went back to saver stuff. Yeah. All right, but if I you want to start, I'll add the chart one. back. So this one this right one here, I think we could have hope. I went oh, back a little bit breakout. further because I wanted to show you the breakout. So this is a yeah, three year I chart. Love this is a three year chart. It's taken three years for this to break out. Wow. So let's, let's get into it. So the blue, just so we can distinguish the lines, is your down channel. The red right here is your breakout. We're going to go ahead and get closer with a four-hour chart the last six months. And you can see Ukraine it didn't break out for very long, gave all of it back just about, and then it's done it again. So it's in an upward motion. It's in an upward trend. And if it can hold 
the, above this blue line, even if it's consolidation or whatever, we've got something here. So it's in the current trend still for the uptrend. And um, you have to keep that in mind because it still may drop further than that. But right now it's holding that steady. And it's been holding that trend to, uh, since December of last year. So what's, not the, uh, what's the <clears throat> spread from the bottom of the channel straight up to the top of the other well, channel? If we go back here. No, no, no. Uh, on your red channel. Oh, you're talking the upper? Okay, okay. Gotcha. It, so it, before it's measure started, from the bottom of your channel line straight yeah. up to the other channel line, how much money is in between the two? So, oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, a lot. 29 cents is this bottom. Down right. Here. And go straight up. Yeah, that's. Uh, no, straight wow. up above where you were at. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You can see the a dollar spread. two. A dollar two. Well, about 80 cents. Yeah. So All right. Is, well, that's a that's a wide channel. And that's that our movement. Well so, yep. So it's holding it so far. But as long as it doesn't break down up the, below this blue line, I don't hate it. Um, and I think it's, I mean, it looks like it's wanting to continue. I'm going to go to the one hour so we can just see that. Yeah, every it time it gets well close. Good with that financial coming yeah, out, if it, it looks starts, as good as it could be. Starts trying to touch it. It keeps bouncing off of it. And you can see, because of the wicks, you can see um, these are buyers stepping in here to to hold it up so right here the dollar 35 and it went to two dollars within two days you know <laughs> that's a pretty huge gap there <clears throat> so it's looking fast mover. yeah it is and it's looking and really good the last five it days a of 170 million or something i can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head yeah i think it was up there but i mean that's not too i mean for this type of movement it doesn't seem to affect it at all <laughs> so it's doing really well, and I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't have told you that it had a lot of shares in it. I mean, there's a lot of volume with it as well. It's kind of dying off a little bit today. I would give it some some room just to see if it's going to hold up. But I like it if it can continue this this uptrend. Right now we're sitting at dollar sixty four. The bottom of this trend is like a dollar forty five, dollar forty nine. Um, but keep in mind, even if it breaks that, keep in mind. Of the blue line for the downtrend because it's not uncommon right. for them to retest this downtrend which is around a dollar 20. so right. just keep that in mind because uh, it might not be here for you but if you have a stop then you stop out and then you can say huh i might want to re-enter right here and as time goes by this dollar 20 is going to get a little bit lower and lower this is the the, down the downtrend so go back three right. years identify that and you can do this on your own and kind of see what it's doing Back to you, John. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. I am over here trying to get some heads up on Beanfly, Butterfly Network. Uh, this is... Uh, I remember that one coming out. Right there. Oh, do you? I think so. I want to say that was an IPO or, or was this it a... This from spot? Brian. And I am not aware of this one. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. ninety seven, mm -hmm. Up about 3% today. Uh, we've got news over here with well, nothing dedicated. So I got to sort through everybody's stuff here. Lots of financials. They like to talk about their financials. I'm going to hope that they're good. Uh, any real news down here? Portable Butterfly IQ ultrasound system for universal yes. hospitals. Yes, this is one Kathy. I think Kathy Wood was all over this one. Uh, ah. Back in the 2020, 2021, whenever, you know, it's about 29, 30 bucks then, I think. Now, let me see about Butterfly Network. Uh, they came on as a SPAC through Longview yep. Acquisition. There you go. Uh, with the technology, with a semiconductor technology of the Butterfly IQ, the Butterfly's mission is to democratize, <laughs> democratize <laughs> medical imaging and contribute to the aspirations of global health equity. Okay, we got a lot of big words there, but Obviously, Lily is familiar with this company, and it was a SPAC. They're out there right now, but a SPAC comes on the market at ten dollars, and right That's now right. we're at a dollar ninety-seven. So this has right. had a hard time since she's come on the market. I didn't see any other news there. Let's see what their financials are doing. Financials have been growing steadily every single year. They have been increasing. Looks like they're keeping about uh, a little more than fifty percent of everything that they're making. Can't complain about okay. that. And they're doing about 20 million every quarter right now. 
and they've already done their their final quarter for 2022. So everything is out with, with this one. We are all caught up. Uh, share structure, it's reasonable. I don't know what the float is, but it's under 174 million. That's not too outrageous. We can work with that. And disclosures. Lots of nice disclosures over here. We've got people investing. You got your 13 DAs, 13 Gs. We've got maybe some buying and selling going on here with the investors. I don't know which is which. We're not going to dive into all of these. This one here, the 8K, I did just take a glance at this. This had to do with saying we are not associated with Silicon Valley Bank. Everybody, put, everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody put needs to put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, As boy. a matter of fact, we covered a company last <laughs> night that took a beating because they're a holdings company. And even though they don't associate themselves with the bank, seven of their holders did. They have like 19 companies and seven of them did. And oh, wow. now that we know no harm was done, nobody lost anything, nobody got hurt. So any big falls on the market for those sort of situations should recover from common sense. And that's what we looked at the other day. It took a huge drop of $1.40 or something off of its 305. And I said, well, you know, no harm, no foul. It should go back. And it has been steadily cl climbing back right now. So we do have a lot of potentially good news here. I would go through all of that. Yeah. Um, I did look at one here. This one was a sale and it's a pretty big sale. This comes from the chief technology officer. He sold uh, 31, 32,000 shares. He got himself 64,000, well, more, more than that, like $70,000. I doubt that was to buy groceries and pay his rent. But that's none of my business. I'm just saying. All right. I think that's all the information we got over here about the company. Does all she right. look like she's heading anywhere back to $10? Uh, no, not quite. I mean, <laughs> this right here is uh, just your six month, four hour chart. But, you know, I will back it up real quick. Your three year chart, this company, when it IPO, of course, I mean, granted, it was a SPAC, it was sitting around 10 bucks. Right. Which is right around this area right yep. here. And then as soon as they merged, you know, they selected Butterfly and that was who they're going to merge with. Yep. And back then in 2020, everything went crazy. So, it, of course, it blasted off to $29.13. Now, Sweet. obviously, you can still see there's a downtrend. I just went ahead and got closer <laughs> to, to map down. it out for you. What's that, John? Just a wee downtrend. Not yeah, much. I mean, overall, it's still in a downtrend, but I want to show you a little bit closer. So I went ahead and pulled up the six months. So here we are. What's interesting to me is about, it's only below it just a little bit where it consolidated before. And you see that it consolidated from like December to probably about middle of January. And then we started moving up and challenging wow. the top of the channel. That's frustrating. And, well, exactly. But I mean, there's gains to be made on moves like this and it looks like it's trying to do that again. So, I mean, it's just the beginning of it that started probably right on around March, probably last week sometime, March the 8th, March the 10th, something like that. So I'll get a little bit closer, uh, your one hour chart. I just wanted y'all to see that. So that's what it's doing now is it's trying to consolidate. It tried to do it here and it failed. So it can fail. It's still got a bottom of the channel. So that's why I have to back out and show you. The bottom of the channel is way, it's, it's close to the top of the channel. So that's what I'm interested in because it's sitting there and it's thinking about consolidating and breaking, breaking out. out. Yeah, it's that's possible. where we want to hear potential yes. breakout. So that, that's the top line right here. It's sitting around 270. And it's not there yet. This could take months. But I would be following <laughs> those 10 Q, those, those, those uh, filings that John was just talking about. I would be following that. I would find anything they have going on. I would look at their um, their actual website for Butterfly because the technology is good. Um, I would look at that, see what their press releases are. Try to get ahead of that kind of news and see if it's building up. It is possible. If it wants to hold this dollar eighty-two and start consolidating in a little range here, that's something to start noticing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. Everything you do helps, Lily. That's why I'm happy <laughs> with me. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Let me see, Ron XRP. I know who you are, Ron. You have a different name everywhere you go, and now that XRP <laughs> is a part of you. I know, Ron. Ron and I. 
we met on my Penny Potstock page way back in 2018. Oh, wow. Boy, we've been through the ringer with the cannabis stocks. Okay. So it looks like Ron wants to check out HUBC. Yeah, it ain't cannabis. We're uh, Ron says there's big things expected with HUBC. So let's see. All right. Well, let's see what we got here. They are a cybersecurity company. That You know what that is. Um, yes. I see they have a lot of news here. And this is just recent news. This is all of this. Well, that's not going to be just all theirs, but most of it looks like it. Hub, 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 Israel's hub. So this looks like an Israeli company. And I got to give oh. them Israelis credit, boy, when it comes to tech. Um, let's see here. Hub Security announced the fulfillment of all conditions precedent for the upcoming $1.2 billion merger transaction. Yeah. Yeah, that might be kind of big. Hub Cybersecurity announced its expected SPAC merger. And this is SPAC, yeah. It. <laughs> I was just looking at the chart, and I was like, this has got to be a SPAC. Okay, go ahead. Um, so it's already done the deal, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think so, because we're way below the $10 mark. All right, so this happened February 28th, it looks like. All of the tickers changed over to the new Hub tickers, whatever they may be. All right, all right, so it was a big deal. But there's still something else going on because that's in the past. He's talking about the future. What do we got here in the future? A Lab reaffirms $20 million pipe investment in Hub at $10 per share, which is the original price. If you wanted to buy this with just anybody, $10 a share. Well, they're going to sell them again at $10 a share. And this just came out yesterday. Oh, mm -hmm. see that, that, folks, when you see something like this, I see this a lot where some company will come in and they'll buy a big chunk of shares at 30 cents and the shares are going for 12 cents. Psh, guess what happens that day? Well, when before they start I, moving. Yeah, it <laughs> starts moving. I see the news and I go check. It's already there. Yeah, it it's started like, there. Oh, come on. You didn't yeah. get a chance. <laughs> I never, I find them all the time. <laughs> And they take it right up to that mark. If it was 30 cents, they're at 29. Right there. They leave just a little bit of profit. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. the hub deal here uh, has reaffirmed its irrevocable commitment to invest $20 million in hub as an equity pipe investment at $10 per share. So, wow. what's that give? so that gives you a uh, 2,000 more shares. Is that what that works out to? Is it 2,000 or 20,000? 20,000 maybe. What's their share count right now? They're at 109 million. I mean, it, it, I, I'm presuming now these, I got to presume they're common shares and not preferred shares. At $10 a share, it just sounds like common stock to me. But in either case, it's going to give an esteemed value to the investors about the stock that they're holding. Someone else sees a value at $10 when they could have bought it at $2.39. Yeah, there must maybe. be something to it, right? That's my that's my thinking, and I think that's the way a lot of people are thinking. But then I think we all think others think the way we think. <laughs> and I always like to look more. I never buy what's on the surface. I always dig deeper to find out what's going on. Got lots of filings here. Um, these are all in the beginning of the year, since January. You've got some investors in here. Let's just take a look at one. Uh, this is Highbridge Capital. Uh, that's a blank. What are they giving blanks for? No babies coming from there. Um, MMCAP, they bought just under a half a billion shares, and they only own 2.2% of the business. But they're investing at these low prices. They're coming in. And we've yep. got a few of those. We've got some 8Ks. you got a 10K there if you want to catch up with what they're doing. So there's lots of information here. So they've got things going on. That money coming in is definitely going to help. Anytime big investors come in, especially when they say they're going to buy the stock at virtually four times the price right now. I mean, they're they're investing and, and they're giving funds that this company needs for whatever it is that they want to make happen. So whoever's investing like that, believes in what's been pitched to them. I you hope know, I didn't so. what you were talking about, Ron, because I don't see anything else here. Of course, when you're well, doing your DD, you know, you've got the option to go to Google, do a good search there. And I'll tell you something, folks, if you are going to do a search, let, let me show you one little trick here to save you some time. I'm sure most of you know this, but for those of you who don't, it's worth knowing. I come over here. 
I want to find something. I'm going to use their ticker and the name. I come over to news. I don't want reviews. I don't want opinions. I want news. I come up here to tools and then I go to sort by date. Now, the, the most recent piece of news is on the top right, right there. And you can go down and get older and older. And when you're doing research, the most recent is what you want. So if you're doing research in any other way, if you're not using your filters and telling them what you want to see instead of looking at everything, you're just wasting way too much time. Well, it's just too much to read. <laughs> too much. That's true. Absolutely. I mean, Google is a haystack. I like to use uh, the OTC because it just has needles. They're just a bunch of needles here. There's no hay. So all the information is current here. I think it's a and good place to start, John, and make you see if you want to dig deeper. Go further. Go to the website. And and check out notice, the management, stuff like that. We're looking at a NASDAQ stock <clears throat> on the otcmarkets.com website. Yeah, it's it specifically set up for OTC, but I start all my research here. And as you can see, there is a lot of information. Now, I can't guarantee it's yeah. all of it. That's what research is about, looking further than just one cabinet. But yeah. this is a good place to start. Why run around when you can just go up in this little button here and put in a new ticker and see what's going on? So what You're does ready? Hub C look like? You're does ready? that give us any hope since this news came out? <laughs> Well, when I was looking at it, this is a year chart. You see how it's oh, flatlined. Okay. And God. I was like, that's got to be a SPAC. Got to be a SPAC. So it, it was. John confirmed that. So, and that's what you <laughs> see back here because it kind of holds the line. SPACs hold, you know, nine, 10 bucks. That's where they stay. And then when they decided to merge, it spiked to 1698 and it's pretty much dropped ever since then. So, not a lot going on. But here recently, you can see the last 20 days we hit a dollar 10 and we're headed up and and if you <laughs> you get even closer the last five days which that news came out yesterday we're in breakout mode you see that so i mean it tested oh, it came yeah. back in but we've broken out here and let me get closer because i want to show that Ooh, to look you at that aftermarket activity yep. It broke out, came back in, broke out again. It came back and retested. This is why I draw these lines. I mean, these are very simple. You can get more technical, but it's a good start. It retested, and now you see that it's it's blasting right now. Um, and so it's done really well, consider it was $1.11, $1.10 yesterday. Yeah. So this is a really good one to keep an eye on. They like the news. It has can potential. You, uh, can you check out the warrant? I think it only needs a W. Oh, is there a warrant? Yeah, I think uh, uh, yep, it's been brought is. to my attention by there it uh, is. 17 five. Yep, 17.5. There's a warrant. So the last the 180 warrant, days, 45 cents. Go up when the value of the stock, I mean, generally speaking, when the value of the stock is growing, when it is esteemed to have more value, the warrant becomes more value because it's nothing more than basically Correct. a coupon to buy this share in the future at a discounted price. So- Normally, if you see the right. stock start running like Lunar, when Lunar ran, the warrant was running too. In first gear, it should have been in fourth uh -huh. gear, but yeah. that's what happens. Well, this is the last 20 days on the warrant. It's went from eight cents to 17.5. So 17 and a half cents, pretty so much. So it's very calm right now. And I got to tell you, most warrants are calm right now. We haven't it's had any big rippers in the last month. Not yeah. really. But so, just uh, what, uh, March the 1st, it, Touched 45 cents for whatever reason. Now that's a good gain. 17 cents the day before was the low and it went to 45, but it was a quick spike that morning, it looks like, in pre market. Right. And then um, came all the way back down and even lower. So I don't know what that was about, but I mean, it can, it has the potential to spike. So I'm going to take that W off of there, but that's how you find the warrant, add the yep. W. Usually, sometimes it's a W. It's doing a lot better than the warrant right now. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, but it's moving. And, and I like it, it. Wants, I think at this price with that news, I like it. I, I like it too. I want to, it's, it's a little bit uh, like it's too speedy for me right now. I'm gonna do the one day, too one speedy. day, five minute. Yeah, it's just it's a little bit too hot for me right now with all these big green bars. I like I'm it's not with the slow hand. <laughs> We wait for it to calm down because I mean this wick right here tells it you is. It's some sellers. Yeah. You got some sellers right here. You know, a lot of people saying, okay, finally I can get out of this one. Cause maybe they're in there from before. I don't know. Um, but so give it I would give it a little bit of breathing room, see if it'll come back and retest this 50 at least. 
So that's around the 230 area and, and see if it wants to try to hold up. And if it's doing that, okay, game on. <laughs> there you I go. I agree, 100%. Oh, it's so hot right now. I don't even want to look at it no more. That's, a, that's how y'all get FOMO. All Don't right. do that. Don't do that. Wink. Got you again. <laughs> All right. Lucky me. Uh, T Rick. And uh, who's the other one here? T Rick has D R C R and motivationally inclined facts. Ooh, I like that name. You have <laughs> EPAS. Well, folks, I already have these up here D P U I. DRCR and EPAS. These are my three hot stocks in my mind right now. They've all got things. DPUI is just exploding. I mean, come on. They've got buildings going up everywhere across the country. Then you do have DRCR. DRCR, I went and read a, a uh, filing today, a news press maybe, and I just put it in a nutshell and tweeted it. This is it, folks. Dear Cashmere Holdings, Swiftly Global displayed impressive Q4 revenue results, jumping from $105,000 at the beginning of the year to $24 million in the last quarter of the same year. It is a huge wow. jump. This that company is. is involved in gambling. They have two apps. Uh, they have a wallet which you hold all your crypto in, your money in, your banking, mm -hmm. you do all this stuff, and it allows you to bet. Then they have their Swifty Predictive app, which is Tinder with bettors. And while you're watching your game, it'll bring up a mini bet for five or 10 bucks. Is he going to complete the pass? Are they going to make a, a first down? Is he going to hit a home run? And it's just Very Tinder. Tough. Yes, I want to bet it. No, I don't. And I oh. think impulsive bets are going to be ripping. People are going to, why did you do that? You, oh, it was just a simple $5 bet. Every time you mention that one, I'm, I just see me losing so much money because I would be so tempted and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to bet on that. Sure, why exactly. not? It's so quick. It's so quick so and in a moment. You want that thrill, right, John? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and you're playing a game. And it's, and you're when playing they, a game. And when they make it just a simple $5 bet, oh, what's $5? Yeah, yeah go into a dollar store. It's only a dollar store. Well, why yeah. did I walk out with $64 less in my pocket <laughs> in a dollar store? This is what happens. So oh, I yeah. think it's going to be big. They're not in the U.S. yet. I'd have to do some um, jumping into this to see where they are at. They are in the UK. The UK is huge, folks. The UK is a big gambling country. I lived there for 10 years of my life, and it's clean. <laughs> gambling doesn't cause any problems, and it has no atmosphere of Las Vegas. That just doesn't exist. It's just normal. It's next to the bakery. You go in, you make your bet, you play some electronic games. But they're clean, they're friendly, and they've been around forever, and they're rich. These companies over there know what the heck they're doing and they're there. And then they got another license, which covers, it's easier to say it covers the countries that don't have laws against gambling, though it covers a lot of countries, but they're not here in the States yet. And they want to be here. We love to gamble in the U S and it is legal. If your state says it's legal, they passed a pass law in 2018, allowing gambling on sports now. And they're allowing it just like cannabis. Every state makes their own rules. And the state gets to decide if it's going to be able to be online or if it has to be brick and mortar. So we're going to have some states you can gamble online. My state, Michigan, I can gamble online, but I live three miles from Indiana. I can't get online because I'm too close to Indiana. It says I'm in the gray area, so I can't do it. So even though your state may say yes, you may not be able to get on. So I see a lot of things going on with this company. They've got both their apps out there. They're operating them. Obviously, impulse betting is making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just launched everything about three, four months ago. It, it was quick. We've been waiting a long time for this. And I think it's just going to start tearing it up. I think the revenues are going to pour in as this catches fire and starts spreading. So does the chart look as good as I think well, it's going to be looking? I'm trying, John. I'm trying. I've got some color. We've looked at this before. So yes. I want to be able to identify some things for you guys. So and let me jump back over here and put it, put my chart on. All right. Yeah, we so we've looked at this that. one before, and this is why I need to explain all this to you. We've looked at this. So the blue lines were already there. And this is where I was telling everyone you're going to have to, because the yellow one is where we were looking at it. And it was, in a, it was running, you know, it was in this channel. It's moving up quickly. And I was telling y'all it's going to have a trouble 
here. It's got to get over this and hold for it to continue, and it didn't. And then it wanted to lose this one, too. And now you see how it's dropped out of it. Right. So I'm going to get rid of that because that is old. That's when we were looking at it before. I just wanted y'all to see um, why what, these what lines are important. What was that? What is that high bubble? Uh, point, point four three five. All right. Point four three five. The low is point one zero one three. So lots of room here. But these lines are important. These are this is resistance. Yeah. But this purple line, I couldn't find another color. You guys are so many colors. This purple line is also very important because right here, you'll see there was resistance for this to break out. This is way back. This is yeah. um, in July of 22. But you can also see when it revisits what happens. Now, it has came down a little bit lower than that before. But, but we're back rare. there now. Look at it. One, two, no, one, two here, three, four. Yep. Here's five. That's home base. This is it. Yeah, it can go under it, but that's how you know where you set your stops, you guys. So yep. this line is right at 0.1750, pretty much. So if you know if it wants to act up and get below 0.16, then let it go and let it come down here and see where it wants to, you know, reevaluate things. But you can if have it actually stop. came down that low. I'd buy my first package right down there. Thank you. This is this is a smart place to buy right here on this. Pretty purple line. <laughs> yeah, not not and everything. We some, just, we, we some, just it's a good price, but it could get better. It could yeah. fall. We could get a better deal. So your 20 day. We just revisited. This was uh yesterday. We Look just that. revisited that line. So granted, we got a big red bar right now, but you see these wicks. There's buyers here. There are buyers here. So I mean, I don't hate it in this area where it's at right now, which is point 21. I don't either. Um, Especially if you like this company, you want to do a little bit of research, see where they're going. I do like what they're doing with this app. Um, and if they'll keep expanding it and it goes into other countries, I mean, it's like it will be treated like a game. You know, there'll be several users, lots of money. And as long as the states are allowing you to be able to gamble. So do your research on that. But I don't hate it here. There's not a lot of risk here. Versus I honestly where it was. think because of the potential of the company's expansion, Mm -hmm. And it's becoming popular yes. and because people gamble. And if let, let's, if anything happens where we're forced back into our houses, gambling is going to go through the God blessed roof. I mean, it's, true, true. You know, they're <laughs> going to occupy themselves and they start going from country to country because they've got a lot of licenses. This could really explode folks. Look at the other gambling companies out there that are on the major exchanges. Look at, uh, Unite and Fanfare or Fan Fuel, yeah. Fan Fuel, Fuel Fan, whatever they are. They're doing Absolutely. quite well. Now it is down right now. Everything's down right now. But the point is, where are they going to go? You could play this for a longer play. It doesn't have you to could. be for the third. This could Put be a good way. long hold. I'd rather buy here, right here in this zone, closer to this purple line, than I would to buy it here at this resistance of the blue line. You really? got some Got some room here. So 0.21, this blue line sits about 0.275. And that's All right, the resistance. We got, there you we go. got two minutes left, Lily. I got two one. Two minutes. I, I can do it in two minutes. I to cover. We're I right on it. time. <laughs> Let's do it. And he actually asked for the stock that I already had up here. Look actually, there. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Perfect. Did I mention EPAS the other day? I you may have video? covered EPAS recently. I did an interview with the uh, management of uh, okay. EPAS about a year ago. And okay. as a ma matter of fact, uh, let's see here. I can tell you exactly what day. Got to go mm -hmm. back three years. Right here. It was on uh, January 10th, 2022. I did an interview with, with the management. Uh, they, they had had this huge run back here, and that's where I got my lines drawn. They have had a high of 15 cents, and they've had a low of double zero one. Can't yeah. even calculate that drop. And she is now up at almost two cents. Now, what really <clears> stands <throat> out on this huge chart here is that volume. Yeah, it's, it's 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 thick on the bottom, and it is the most volume she has had in three years. And okay. she's low compared to this. Right now, she is only getting to the halfway point. 
Here's our support on the bottom of this run and our resistance. There's our 50% mark roughly. And we haven't even reached that yet. And that's what I've been watching for. I'm holding yeah. EPAS. I've had EPAS for a while. I'm watching this come up and she tagged it once right there. And this big white line, you can see when I come down to that five, 10 minute area, I got my channel in there. And she is riding inside that micro channel, right? <laughs> and she is just coming out of it right now, but it's this support that's holding her up. So she is bouncing in here right now. But that volume is what, what it's all about. And it's because of the news. They've had a lot of great news here. Now, when I covered the company, none of this existed. Mm -hmm. They're into drones now. I don't know if okay. that's all they're doing. When I got into them, it was about the metaverse. We were discussing the metaverse and these glasses that they were going to be making. He said, we don't have them yet, but these are what we planned. I don't know where all that went. I haven't dove deep into it to see if they're still doing that. But they started talking about these drones. And these aren't little drones. You know, we, we think of drones as these little hovercrafts. Yeah. These, yeah. Are, these are bigger. These are bigger drones. The ones that deliver packages wings. and stuff, yeah. They, they, they got wings and stuff. I mean, mm. they're, they're for military use. Okay. Uh, flying, not just hovering, flying. Well, they have this drone, and they went and made this smart recharge for it because being electric, that's what these drones are, of course. They can only go so far before they have to recharge, and you don't want to have to have a person there to help it recharge. So yeah. they patented this recharger. Well, then they were asked to come in and showcase this to the Air Force, and they submitted what they call an SBIR proposal. It allows their product to be used, to be bought by the government. The first stage is $75,000 per proposal. If you are accepted on the first stage, you can then apply for the second. They did apply. They got accepted. They are now putting in their second proposals. Second proposals get $1.5 million per proposal accepted. And I think you get your name on a preferred vendors list now, so you don't have to bid your product out. They just come to you and buy it at a set price. And once you get accepted for phase two, you get into phase three. In phase three, you get $15 million per proposal. Mm -hmm. So, they are getting contracts with the government. They are moving quick. I mean, they went from phase one to phase two uh, in a month, I think. So yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't taking long. And these sort of products, uh, uh, self-defense, military, they're not cheap. You know that. The government gets charged the top dollar. Nobody sells anything to the government cheap. So they've got a good product. They back up their product with their own technology and charging, and the government is interested in it, and they're moving it along. So there looks to be a lot of potential in growth here, too. And if it's going to be appreciated by this one little organization, it's probably going to get attention from others, too. So EPAS, I'm holding it because I believe in it. I think this is a start here. All these U.S. contracts, these proposals that they're working with are going to be a big door that's going to open yeah. up. And the chart kind of reflects that here lately, like it's, you know, trying to break out and keep spiking. It's because of this news that it's having recently. Show us so. what 321 million shares can do on a float with decent news. 321 million. Is that how many it is? Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. So this is, I uh, just did a 90 day chart, uh, one hour, just so y'all can kind of see, because it's hard to see the overview of everything that's happening in the last six months. I didn't want to go that far back because we've looked at this one before. This blue one is old. I was just showing the, the channel yep, yep. trend. And yep. then we had a breakout from before. This is also old. Yeah, You can see it lost it. Pretty, and pretty now, much where the uh, lines yep. begin is yeah. where we looked at it. Yes, pretty right around here when it was breaking <laughs> out. So here's yep. the thing, though. It lost that trend, and now you see what it's doing, bumping its head, bumping its head, bumping its head. It's trying yep. to get back into it. You're going to have resistance there. So that's old. I just wanted to show that, though. Of course, the trend's changed now, so you just remove it. Anyway, we're, we're still in the uptrend. We still have broken out from the original tr trend back here from, what, six months ago. Yeah. That, that, and it's healthy. Look at this. This is very healthy. So I would wait for my dip if I'm interested in this one, and I'd be finding a spot to get in. Um, but also check out that news John was talking about. 
I would be really interested, like John, you said something about them in the metaverse. I would be interested to find out what happened to that. I do not like companies that switch from this and switch to that and switch. I, I've seen it before. Yeah, I don't like I it. I get the impression because I've looked at EPAS off and on. I get the impression it's back burner because the metaverse just wasn't popular when all okay. this important it's stuff. It's okay as long as the companies can work on more than one thing. I just don't like it when they change it. Like, oh, we're doing uh, cannabis. Now we're into technology and AI. What? Yeah. It just doesn't fit. I don't like that. cars last week, cannabis this okay. week, golf okay. carts next week. I think Miss Belmore might be our last person that's even with us today. And thank you for staying. Um, you did see what she brought up with NGTX and uh, IPO in tomorrow. <laughs> I see that. I see what yep. you mean. And we appreciate that information, Belmore. We try to keep up with all of them, but there's no way. Yeah, well, she's had us looking at Cosm and AMIH, which I goofed because they're not bringing in that zip doctor information. It wasn't coming to uh -oh. the OTC market. And that's the big deal was that zip doctor deal. And we kept missing it because we weren't going to Twitter. We weren't going to Google. Yeah. You can't just stay on one site. And I don't want anyone to think Not I don't either. leave this site. I do. But for time purposes, do. I try to stay there. But, you know, if you know something, you can give me a heads up. Drop it in the comments. Yeah, we appreciate it. That's how we got y'all here. We appreciate it. It's a team effort, y'all. It's team effort. <laughs> anyway, thank y'all. 100% increase in viewers today. Oh, through 200. <laughs> Great to have you folks. Thank and we you are so here much. every Thursday, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. As soon as you hear the bell, just click your button and come on over here. We'll keep you entertained for another hour. We'll see you next week. Absolutely. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.